What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another Magic Online Draft Arena from Dominarino, Domino's Pizza. Another Domino's.com Draft Arena. This guy not caring about what we want. <laughs> I feel like it's just Gilded Lotus here. I like both of these as white legendary cards. Uh, tricky like we actually went 2-1 in the last draft, so not too bad. That's pretty much my my... My sweet spot, I think. I just, yeah, I'm okay if I go two one. I think I want to take this Gilded Lotus. Is that just? These are probably just better, right? I don't even know, man. I don't even know, man. Five mana is a lot. I watched the vod from last night. Were you thinking of the Kobayashi Maru last night in reference to the Naruto thing? No, I was thinking of. Um, I was thinking of Wow, actually. Um, because I had to take a design test and I had to reference the Nauru. We went Lotus. We just went we just went we just went large. Large and in charge. Meanwhile, this pack has nothing exciting in it. Wah. I think Garn is probably the most exciting card in here. Academy Drake is probably the most solid card. Tabitha, huh? That's pretty good. I think it's just Drake. I think Drake is more... I think we're going to try to still go the blue-white. Oh, Knight of Grace helps that. It's also a deep freeze. Yeah, we're going to take the Knight of Grace. Alright, blue-white. Blue-white it is. Fall of Thran. Do we just Gilded Lotus into Fall of the Thran? Huh. Huh. Are we going to do this? Do we do this? We can also take like two Power Stones and now we can be the Power Stone deck. We're Fall of Thranning. Are you guys ready for the Fall of Thran? This format's a blast, man. I've had more fun in this format. Oh, a Baird? Oh, Baird into Fall of Thran? Yes, please. I'm a simple man. I see a fall of Thran. I take. I let, I watch it fall. I should have got a drink between this. I I always forget to go get up and walk around and stretch me legs. What up, nerd? K Ferd. K Ferd. Your name rhymes with nerd. Come on. Can't pay for Baird if you got no lands. Ready for the fall of something. What does that mean? Is that a reference to yourself because your name is Wall? Frank Lepore does rhyme with Frank Lesnore. Dang. You did got him. I thought we were friends. Dang. That's cold, brother. I'm going to take this memorial. That's pretty good. Uh, Banalish Honor Guard's fine. Oh, I like it. Invoke. I'll, invoke is main deckable. Let's... Frank, you missed what I said earlier, but I went 7-0 in my first arena draft, which was also my first draft ever. That's awesome, dude. Wow, 7-0 in your first draft ever? John Graham Doe, congrats, buddy. Best friends with blue is off. Now best friends with red. Yeah, it returns two land cards from the graveyard. So we can actually memorial, get up back bar memorial. That's pretty good. 
That's a combo. Look at all these combos. Play Fall of Thran, invoke our Fall of Thran. Play Memorial. Fall of Thran, our Memorial, get back. What a time to be alive. Um, Amaranthine wall. Actually, wall is, I think this wall is actually fine. Wow, did you just say I'm a combo? I hope I'm the pizza combos, because those are the best. <clears throat> uh, I don't really like Knight of New Banalia. I wonder if Orcish Vandal is better when we have both of these bad boys. I'm gonna take Vandal. I think a three one is just as good as a two as a one one. Same thing. They're basically the same cards. I don't know why you guys are making a big deal about it. I'll take charge. <laughs> take charge. Actually, we have one, two, three, four, five. Is this the one deck where board the weatherlight is reasonable? I guess we'll find out. Oh my god. Destroy all lands unlimited when we have a Gilded Lotus? Come on, dude. Eh, we'll take the rescue just in case. Uh, we'll take the rescue just in case. Are we living in a simulation? I'm going to take this on Sarah's wings. Because that's a good card. Also, it makes any creature legendary, which is just fantastic for this Immolating Inferno. Also, we can put it on this wall, make it indestructible. How do you even get by that? You don't. You just lose. Scoop it up. Scoop it up, nerd. I like a second memorial, but I actually think it's Pegasus here. I don't care about G2 Lava Mancer, Lava Runner in the, uh, in the, oh, this is actually the one, too. This is not the one I care about, anyway. Um, we can probably get more Radiant Lightning, because this guy's going to the main deck, though, so... I actually kind of like this guy in the deck. We have one, two, three, four, five. We have six legendary, six, six historic spells right now. I think it's self-replicator here. The only other option is Sergeant at Arms. I, these two are fine, but I don't think they're on par with Misha self-replicator. Let's self-replicator. Precog Field was fine. Um, I thought it was good. Also, it feels like we're playing a more controlly, like late game grindy deck. I'm gonna get some more. I want some more one threes so I can just block all day until I'm ready to. <clears throat> until I'm ready to knock it out, knock it out the park. Oh boy. Hmm. Hmm. It's just Goblin Barrage, right? Do we pass the Zahid? It's also legendary. We can play off a Gilded Lotus. Yeah, Zahid seems way too powerful. Hmm. Legendary permanent cards. So you, you, and you. All right, not enough. It's not enough.
If we could also get, uh, actually, we have On Sarah's Wings and we have Fall of Thran right now. I wonder if that's enough. I don't think so. We're not taking the second board. It might just be in a second invoke the, the divine. Could just be Cold Water Snapper, too. Could also be, yeah, I'll just take another invoke. I don't mind having, oh, Time of Ice? Bounce all your guys, kill all your lands. All right, we'll time of ice. All right, red's back on the or blue's back on the menu, boys. Is it tiny bird or is it big, big snappy? I think it's tiny bird here. We'll go to tiny bird. Oh, actually, we have we have a on Sarah's wings. We might just want the turtle, dude. I like the disciple because I think we can get another turtle. Oh, Cloud Rider Sphinx. Cloud Reader Sphinx. My, my bad, my bad. I also do like Voltaic Servant because it triggers Historic for this. Uh, and it triggers Historic for the Disciple. I think it's... I, yeah, I'm not going to pass the Sphinx, but I would not I would not mind another 1-3. Uh, <clears throat> another I'm going to take Glider. It does the same thing. Precog Field. That's actually pretty cool. Is it? We don't have a ton of things. I'm just going to take it anyway. I'm going to take it over the arcane wings. We'll get a snapper. Don't you guys worry. Snapper's going to table. It'll be fine. Yeah, you probably can't win if we have a snapper with a Sarah's wings on it. This deck looks pretty sweet. Also, we can tap Glider to play Jin for... Ch oh, Sergeant at Arms? I think it's better than Lance. Radiant. Oh, Joda. It's just a 4-3 flyer. I always get excited about it because it's a really... Like, it's a flying legendary creature that has a big box of text. I think Radiant Lightning is probably just better. All right. And now we can actually rescue something. Bouncing Sergeant at Arms to Bouncing Fall of Thran. It's basically just a way to save your guy, right? Bounce the Time of Ice. I actually could cons I'd consider playing one rescue. Huh. Is Sundering better than Seal Away? Also, if we go Fall of Thran... Oh, it's each player, so it triggers. Oh. Hmm. Huh. I think we have to take Sundering. There's that Snapper. The, my, my biggest my biggest issue with this... I guess we're playing Zahid at, at four, so that should be fine. I'm going to take Snapper here. I kind of want Triumph. But I think Snapper is actually better, because I just want to make sure... We have, we have enough legendary creatures. We have this guy. We have Baird. We have On Sarah's Wings. We'll get another one. We'll get more. Don't worry. Don't you worry. Yeah, my experience with, with Triumph is that it can also be underwhelming. I agree with you. Ooh. Mesa Unicorn or Call the Cavalry? These are the questions we ask ourselves. <clears throat> Or we can just take Voltaic Servant, which is probably better with a uh, historic theme we have going here. I think it is called the Cavalry. On Sarah's Wings number two? Probably just going to take that. Yeah, Voltaic Servant does tap for Zahid, which is pretty relevant. Actually, forgot we had. Yeah, I don't like Ruinous Blast at all. I just thought it was funny that we were hitting all of the... We have Karns. We have this one. We have the other one. I'm just going to say... I'm, just, I'm not going to do their names. I'm just going to say what they are. I'm just going to say this one and that one and the other one. Uh, I don't think I want another wall. I think I do want another two drop. I 
Oh, we did see a Yawgmoth's offering too. So the only one we haven't seen is a uh, Druidic Vow. So. Yeah, it's fine. We're not going to be heavy blue, but we're going to be blue enough that, like, even even on, like, this is still a, f a flyer with four toughness. I think that's fine. Let me take the rescue out for now. Oh, wow. That is a late blessed light that I am more than willing to, to pick up here. All right. Now we need to make some cuts, unfortunately. Yeah, it might actually be Jin. I like having it, but I don't think it's actually... It, it kind of... Our deck is very light blue. It's light blue, like a, te like a teal or a cornflower. I'm not going to get the Voltaic Wander. Voltaic... What's his name? Voltaic on Tapper, am I? It's just not happening. Oh, we did it, boys! This is the card I wanted more than anything because of the Zahid, because of the Gilded Lotus, or because of the, uh, yeah, because of the Gilded Lotus, because of all the things that it just works well with. Oh, yeah, that's, a, that's great. That's just great. Are we going to make one cut now? Man, what do we even cut? Cut the wall? God, the wall seems really good, though. I watched you blow up movie earlier and jumped out of my chair and yelled for joy when you beat that stinky ghost. I do the same thing. I get so excited when I get to beat people who cheat. It's just the best. Josh Vance, uh, Josh look, looking like a 41 card deck. Hmm. Yeah, I like the wall because it, it triggers everything. Like, let's look at the things that, that the wall does well. Uh, makes this guy cheaper. Triggers Misha's Replicator. Uh, triggers both of these guys. <clears throat> can get flying with the Pegasus Courser. No, just kidding. That was a that was a bad joke. Cut fall of Thran. What in the earth? Why are you the way that you are? We literally built the deck around Fall of Thran. Why would we cut it? That's like when we started the draft. That's literally where we're we're trying to play Fall of Thran. I feel like this is just really hard to get around. Forty-one, it is. I like Pegasus because it blocks well. We want to survive until the late game, so I'm actually gonna. I'll keep this hand. This hand seems fine. Yeah, we're not cutting fall. Fall is like one of the reasons that we're playing the deck.
Uh, I think glider's fine. Like, it, there's a lot of... There's a lot of ground stalls in this format I've seen. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, well, that's a legendary, so that's unfortunate. So, like, you can actually sit behind, like, your 4-4s and your 1-3s and your stuff. And just keep getting in there with, uh... With glider. Alright, this is fine. Come sail away, come sail away, come sail away with me. Yeah, we're not going to put it on the Drake because then we can't play the second one on something better. I would definitely put it on this guy, though. Uh, nope. Tap you, keep you up. Now we have Syncopate up still. <laughs> <clears throat> I wish I had a syncopate. I'm just a man without a syncopate. I don't think we need that right now. The problem is we can't attack if we... We're definitely playing this. That's fine. Huh. I want both of these, actually. Put on top. Put on top. <clears throat> Next turn, we're going to go Gilded Lotus into On Sarah's Wings. And then the turn after that, we're going to go Karn's Temporal Sundering. Which seems pretty good. I'll take two. There's just way too many things that can go wrong there. I feel like we put it on the less impressive one. Whatever. There goes my taxon with Baird plan. Yep. <sighs> like you do. We still have another one. All right, now we're just hoping they don't have a second Blessed Light. You have to do the uh, the Game of Thrones song when you attack with everybody. We were one land away from Temporal Sundering that turn, but it did not happen. <clears throat> I 
Oh my god, they're going to put us to 10. Yargle, I've come to Bargle. Mother of God. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh dear. Well, that's pretty scary. I'm not comfortable with anything that's happening right now. Oh, well. <clears throat> I guess I'll take all of this and go to three life points. I really want to bounce this guy, but I also want the life from this. Hmm. The problem is they replay it and they go back up to 10. <clears throat> I'd almost much rather bounce the Baird. Bouncing Torgrass seems bad. Because we get to deal f four and four, so we get to put them down to like. Thank you. Steven C, six months in a row. Thank you so much, man. Really appreciate it. Uh, choose target player to take the turn. This guy doesn't have reach, right? I mean, if they have Gideon's Reproach here, it's just so bad for us. Oh my god, seriously? Come on, dude. Alright, good times. It's gonna be Fall of Thran. And they just tap that down. One, two, three, four. Jesus. So attack with these three, they tap down this guy. Eh, we'll just pass here. Yep. <laughs> sure. Let's go to one life. And draw an island. Mm, you got it. Okay. I almost want rescue in here. I mean, we saw at least two pieces of removal. We saw Blessed Light and we saw Gideon's Reproach, so. I'm not a big fan of the poet. Jin over Glider? What is it? Um, like, we only have seven islands. Like, we need three of our seven islands. The odds of hitting that doesn't seem great. I got the invoke. I didn't think we've we didn't see anything that invoke even hits except for volt vol, voltaic servant. Oh, this sounds great.
Oh. I don't even want to attack because then we just risk getting blown out by Gideon's reproach. I'd rather just play 5-6 next turn. <clears throat> That's pretty good. It's a pretty good, huh? And here we go. The problem is we still get blown out by reproach, so. Yeah, they, they know it too. No blocks. I'll just attack for five. And then we'll play Baird. And everybody wins. What up, Bjorn? So we can either play Lotus. We can play one of anything in our hand right now. It's probably just Baird, right? We don't want you to... Actually, <clears throat> I like this because then if we hit a land, we can play Guild of Lotus and Baird. So... Put on top... Put on top. <clears throat> Gilded Lotus into Baird. Into, uh... Oh, God, we're doing it. The excitement is real. Not going to block because we know you have reproach. That's fine. Five, six, seven, eight. We take three, six, seven, eight. Yeah, that's actually fine. We have Baird out. You're gonna have to kill Baird. Ludus games. Uh liking Dominaria quite a bit. I will untap my gilded lotus. No Karn's temporal sundering one time. Well, I got news for you, buddy. You're about to experience the fall of Thran. Gotta pay that mana. You can't play the game unless you play that and you must pay that cheddar. I'll take five. Oh, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Say goodbye to your little lands. <clears throat> uh, destroy all the lands. Put them all in the graveyard. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Jump in the line, rock your body in time. Okay, I believe you. I'll untap Gilded Lotus that's already tapped.
So now they have Reproach back up, which is a trade here. They could block here. One gets through. They can block here. I just know they have reproach, right? So it's like pretty sad. Just always have reproach. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just going to pass here. Well, he, I knew about fall. The problem is if they use the reproach, like, we don't get any, like, <clears throat> it doesn't do anything for us. Yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, they have to block, so they have to have Reproach and Guy, which is fine, because then we get the Cold Water Snapper here. Yeah, obviously. Never didn't have it. Get busy snapping. Oh, they're back up to six lands. Well, five lands, I guess. Exile Baird. Chainer's Torment. So they're going to go up to seven life total. And then they're going to lose four of it, so they go back to three. Okay. And they get a four-four out of it. We do have two on Sarah's Wings. One of them would be pretty epic. That's a little cutie bird. All right. Do we just force them into blocking this guy? They have one mana. If we alpha, <clears throat> they if they they can't double block here. If they double block here, they take three. Yeah, this feels fine. Do you have charge? Are you going to sack this to to trade? Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> so we traded a trapper <clears throat> uh, and a damage for a cold water snapper, which seems fine. So we got a four. Next turn they go to three. This wall is pretty hard for them to deal with.
Yep, you got it. All right, so they get a 3-3 three, three now. They always have their approach. Something we can win with. It's not going to do it. All right. Oh, boy. I don't feel like attacking with this guy's any good. I feel like we have a lot of cards that can actually win us the game here. Like, uh... uh God. Of course, we don't see any artifacts or enchantments in game one other than the glider. And then game two, we see, like, double saga. I, I can't top deck this well, so unfortunately. <laughs> I think you're a turn too late, my friend. <laughs> Literally, if we do this last turn, we might be able to have a fighting chance because this would have to trade with this. But now they just get 6-6 six, six demon. Oh, this is brutal. This deck felt like a 3-0 deck, but... Didn't even tap Gilded Lotus for it. I'm, I'm, I'm so tilted right now. <clears throat> I mean, Sarah's, Sarah's Wings doesn't even do anything for us. Karn's Temporal Sundering is good because we can bounce the demon. Well, I'm at four, so I have to block. Sure. I'm just going to scoop here. We're dead on board. Actually incredible. Well, all right, cool. Yep, all right. Do we want to change anything? Like, I think the deck is fine. I just don't think we drew... I don't know. I don't know what happened. Uh, I didn't try to make them to use the reproach earlier because we can find a way around it. Like, there's no real way, there's no real reason to, to just throw your guy away. <clears throat> I mean, it's a two for one, which is a Gideon's reproach and a three two acolyte, which is great. But it lets them use you're you're letting them use their mana when they have it up, right? They have two mana up. That's perfect. They get it out of their hand. They get rid of your five six. Uh, I would much rather be able to either a save my five six because once we get. Uh, like a wings or a rescue or something like that. We can actually just, you can just waste it, have them waste it. Um, or we can make them tap out to play something else. Like if they, if, if we don't make them play it there, then they're going to have to keep a two mana for the rest of the game for as long as they want to want to do that. And it's just, that's worse for them. Like I, I, I don't see any benefit to us actually throwing away our five, six there just because it gets a Gideon's approach out of their hand. Like, Plus, we also don't 100% know they have it, so. Well, our hand looks great. If we can draw Voltaic Servant into land, land, I'll be 100% happy with it. Okay, we didn't draw a two drop. We drew a three drop. Also, tapping Replicator on six to play this guy for four and using the extra mana to replicate seems pretty good. 
you know, given that we draw lands anyway. All right, you're a turn late, but I'll accept it. Yeah, also, if the other thing is if we draw any removal spell for their 3-2, um, this guy is really hard to deal with because you can't just reproach him. So, like, I'm not just going to throw away a 5-6 and give you the opportunity to get rid of it because it's actually much more valuable than that. Got the double one threes here. Like you do. I hope you don't have any sort of removal whatsoever. And you do. Okay. Sure. <laughs> oh, boy. And the reason we block there is because of Pegasus Corsair, they're probably going to value Corsair over Voltaic Servant nine times out of ten. So. If they do that, and we get to keep the Servant up to trade with the Envoy, it seems fine. Man, lands seem awesome, actually. You guys ever have lands in Magic the Gathering? Those seem great. I'm a big fan of lands, personally, but... <clears throat> All right, one more one more land for replicator and I think we can I think we can come back here. We'll see. We'll see. All right, don't care about that. That's frustrating. Pay one for that guy. I guess we'll just take four here. All right, land. <clears throat> oh, we're playing 17 and a Gilded Lotus. I'm just tempted to keep up Blessed Light here. They could Alpha next turn, but I don't think that's profitable for them. We're probably priced into chump blocking here. I mean, they're not going to attack with Land War Elf, but, you know, if they did. We could also Temporal Sundering if we draw land. Ugh. This is historic, though, right? Because it's a legendary, so... We could pass with light up, but they have six, seven mana, so I don't really feel like that gets us in any kind of winning position. I feel like we kind of have to start getting our board. We got to get our board in order. Oh, wow. No way. Uh, I was able to play Thren Fall of Thren one time, so it's hard to say. This is aggressive.
Uh, we're a little more control, which is why we put it in, because we also had Gilded Lotus, so we can actually establish a flying board presence, and then, uh, just Omnivore, huh? Well, I will chump that guy. Oh, this is great. Omnivore is a real pain in my bottom. Oh, they didn't play anything, though. That's pretty good for us. Land. All right. The lands are good. Hmm. I almost like Temporal Sundering Bounce this guy. But I do want to get the trigger off this, but that seems greedy. attacks clearly all right <clears throat> feeling better now what up Slificus? But, but I consider when I wake up to morning. Okay, well, that's fair. Vicious Hunger. I would assume on Baird? No. Four one ones. Oh. Give you guys haste. Seems good. <clears throat> they still can't attack with a tremendous amount of guys. Sure. I think they can just attack with Omnivore. So if we double block with Baird and Jin, five, six, seven. So this guy becomes a six, six, then an eight, eight. How does this work, right? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. <clears throat> they can make, they can sack three things, which they're probably not going to. They'll probably sack elves pretty easily. Probably sack envoy pretty easily. Making it an eight, eight, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They'll probably easily make it a six, six, either killing this guy or killing the two, two of these guys. Which I think is a fine trade. But if they only make it a six, six, then they're just trading. Either Baird or this guy. But then they can make it an 8-8. Eight, eight. And then we're still keeping one. Uh, why block with Replicator? Because we because they could sack they have to sacrifice two guys in order to kill everything. Three guys. They have to sacrifice three guys to keep this alive, that's why. Five, six, seven. Actually, I kind of like fall. That's pretty good. If we draw a land, it's even better. I guess we could trump with replicator too. That actually seems fine. I'm, I'm a fan of that attack or that block rather. Unfortunately, without seven lands, we can't actually <clears throat> trigger the replicator off of the saga unless we want to get rid of the seventh land as well. All right, well, we don't have to worry about that. The problem is they already have one creature to activate this with, so if they draw any other land, it makes this guy a 6-6, six, six, which is pretty rough. I feel like we want a sergeant at arms first, which is probably better.
We can't make a replicator for wipe lands. It costs six, and it would cost one to activate the replicator, so we'd have to have seven. <clears throat> like, I'm still in jump. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we'll just attack with Zahid. Yeah, I like having the because we're not going to be able to play this post post fall of Thran. So next turn we'll probably just keep Blessed Light up, make a block that they can't really deal with, I guess. <clears throat> or try to. <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty good. We could Blessed Light that too, which we might have to. That's pretty scary. They have one card in hand, though. Warcry Phoenix. Interesting. Oh, you have no... Oh, they all make mana. Ooh, that's pretty bad. <laughs> I was like, oh, you have no extra mana up now. Oh, they know they all make mana. Ooh, scary. Well, we're not attacking now. But next turn, if we fall, we can make a token, which is great. Yeah, we're, we're thinking light. But yeah, I'm thinking light before the next lore, unless they just give us an utterly great block here. Sure. Oh, that's actually great. <laughs> because <laughs> fall off the hand. I mean, we have to exile the song unless we actually just infinite block this guy, in which case, cool. So what are you, four? Actually, if we... If we get rid of this guy, and if they sack the elf, it doesn't matter if they have a million mana because they can't utilize it. I guess. That's fine. Three for one is good enough for me, especially when they got rid of the elf because now they have no mana to actually activate. They have they have no mana to actually attack with the song, so. Where did all your land? 
hands go. <laughs> there you go. They're all big for one turn. This guy being a 4-6 is problematic because now we have a 5-6 and now it's just sad, but... So next turn, if we play Glider, uh, we can actually trigger it twice, which is pretty good. Well, just two replicators. Lands for days. I think the strongest color combination at first was white blue. Now I don't know so much. <clears throat> I don't think we have profitable tax yet. But I think we're in, uh, we're almost there. We're on the way to getting profitable tax. <laughs> this card's actually just a 4-2. Four, four so if we attack with everything, right? Do we know anything they have in hand? I don't think so. If we attack with everything, they go block here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. They can block 4. 6 gets through. One of them is a 1-1. One, one. Two of them are 1-1s. One, I have no idea whether. I don't like attacking with three flyers because they have Mammoth Guy. So. I mean, they're just going to either chump block one of the. They're probably chump blocking here, but I guess they take six if that happens. Oh, uh, I have not played. I played one match of Standard this past weekend. I uh, went up on YouTube on Sunday, I believe, maybe Saturday. And we played with Bant Super Friends, and uh, that's the only standard I've played. And I also play a different deck every time I play standard, so there's no real thing that I can... Oh, we don't win if we alpha. They have four blocks. They could also have anything in hand. And uh, if we attack with everything, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten guys to attack with. So six are going to get through. Let's find out. So six get through. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Maybe that's maybe we do. But if we if like they have one removal spell, right? And then 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 the smallest guys get through. They remove this guy, they get one, two, three, four blocks, and then we they take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Feels bad. Attack with all creatures. I, I don't want to attack with anyone. There's no way to undo this. Yeah, I'm not going to risk that. That seems silly. All their guys are big enough to block our 2-2s. Two and that's all they have to block. They go 4-6 on 5-6. Block 2-2, two, 2-2, two, 2-2. Two, 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 two. Probably block 4-2. Which wasn't attacking, so... All right, that guy will get played, though. Hmm. 
This time we will attack with these guys. If you have like Vicious Hunger in hand, it's totally fine. I'll deal with one Vicious Hunger. You chump with Mammoth and you Vicious Hunger it. That's fine. Shiv and Fire also does the job. Sure. Oh, wow. That's a two for one. That's fine. That's that's better for us. I think we win now because we could have won with, with 10 power on board. Or with 10 creatures on board. Now we have 11, so... Yeah, this is Alpha City. Right? They go block the biggest guys. They'll block four, <clears throat> three, and two. They take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, not even not even close really. Sure. Unless they just have something unbeatable, but I don't know what that would be. All right. Seems good. Whew. Okay. We didn't see much removal, right? they have like two ancient animus that's i think that's all we saw again i think i feel like rescue is pretty fine to bring in like they're gonna ancient animus something we can just bounce it i don't think we saw anything worthy of invoking except for the um <clears throat> the song which is pretty good eh, it's probably worth leaving in for song i'll take out a disciple and bring in a rescue keep the sand. <clears throat> this is pretty good. What up, Simek? Uh, the reason for no gin is we have seven islands, and uh, this is this is this kind of hand is exactly why we're not playing gin, <clears throat> because it's a very blue intensive card, and we have to draw three out of seven islands, and that seems uh, statistically pretty bad. Uh, Coldwater Snapper and Onsar's Wing seems pretty brutal. I think that can win us the game. Especially if they miss a land drop. See, now they're going to make us look stupid with this, uh, with the triple blue easy.
Geist of Saint Turtle. Oh, our opponent's missing land drops, so. Man, I was hoping I would win on the merits of Cold Water Snapper on Sarah's Wings, but. Was not meant to be. Ah, oh, the 04 blocker off Gilded Lotus. That is true. Touche. Skittering Surveyor. Well, that's actually pretty good. Now we got a game again. Oh, boy. Well, this game. Now now we have less of a game. Because now we can go Snapper on 6, on Sarah's Wings, and Replicate on 7. Ooh. Feeling good. I'm actually attacking with the Honor Guard because if they want to trade here, that's totally fine. I want to get guys off the board in case they have Song. And uh, that'll do. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure Misha's Replicator in Standard is too slow. More like grow from the trashes, am I right? Oh boy. Oh, what is that? Cabal Evangel. Ooh. I almost put it on the Misha's guy. And uh, that'll do it. I will assume you don't have, even if you have like Phyrexian scriptures here, like we still get to keep Snapper and attack you to death. I'm thinking about a Mono Green Song Replicator deck. It'd be trash, but maybe the great kind of trash. Okay, that's fair. I will never block with my Snapper. I will never let you gift that guy. All right, sweet. Oh, fall off the end next turn. Kill all the lands, make another replicator. Alright, round thrice. Um Sand's not great, but I'll keep it. We got all our sagas, and that's really the most important part, right? Probably not. Now we have all our sagas. Hey, that's pretty good. Splificus, you gotta use a card first. Command card, meet yourself rep. Icy Manipulator. That's a good one. Well, I'm going to bounce your whole team now. Island? Oh, that's good.
Did you know that time of ice at instant speed is pretty good? I, I had a feeling about that. Wow, that Skizik is pretty good too. Yeah, we'll just keep you tapped. I don't want either of these, to be quite honest. Problem is we'll probably never be able to cast this. I think we just put on Sarah's wings here. Or do we put it here? Yeah, I think I like this better. It gains us one less life, but if they want to tap something down and return, I'd rather be the three this three four. Plus if they want to trade here. Can they just kill us if they crack back? Skizik is five. Six, seven, eight, nine. No, we'd be good. I almost don't want to attack with this guy, but I think we have to. Which puts us off temporal sundering, but... Oh, no blocks at all. All right. <clears throat> That's pretty good. So now they have Skizik and Tutu in hand. So they could probably just play Skizik Alpha here. Shivan Fire kicked. That is unfortunate. Why wouldn't you just tap that guy down forever? That's weird to me. Mm, that's less weird. <clears throat> So five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we'd go to three. If we invoke. I don't think we attack here. We put them to seven. Skizik's a real pain in the ass. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty sure we're dead here.
Like they have three flyers, right? So we block, we can't even block here. We block their other flyer. We take six, we go to one. Oh, they just make Skizik have flying. Yeah, that's pretty bad. All right. Yeah, we're just going to go to the next game. I almost want the second invoke in here. Sarah Disciple is a card I'm regularly unimpressed with, unfortunately. I will play first. And we'll mulligan. And we'll keep this. Look, the perfect Tempest Jin hand. This is really going to punish us for not keeping that fourth land on top. How much does back seating bother you? I mean, like as far as like in chat? My biggest problem with back seating is that people think they know your, a your intentions or b uh, better than you. Basically, <clears throat> like I mean, Cord for Life mentioned getting the legendary sorcery out there. You can't actually cast it with regularity, but the problem is like I'm trying to have fun with the card. Like I'm trying to play it because it's fun. It's a fun time walk, time walk, time walk card, and uh, I want to try it out in limited. And uh, you don't actually learn how many legendary creatures you might need to cast it or how powerful it is when you do if you don't actually play it. So just telling me what to do, what to take out or what to add or what to, why to play this or why to play that isn't actually a learning experience for me. Um, it's just you ascribing your knowledge onto someone else that you probably actually don't even have firsthand. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a weird experience. I mean, it's, it's, it's all fun. It's all good fun. But like, I mean, people, people saying like play Tempest Gen in the deck with seven, seven islands is just... Uh, Probably statistically incorrect. Uh, I would take Eviscerate 100% of the time, I think. Actually, no, it's probably Cast Down. I would go Cast Down. I don't think there's that many legends. Like, it only affects Legendary. It doesn't affect, like, Artifacts or anything like that. So I would just take the... If it said Destroy Target Non-Historic Creature, that would be different because I can't target Artifacts. But I, I think Cast Down's probably... The, the two mana and instant speed of it is probably stronger. Although, you know, not being able to draw lands here. Yeah. All right. So we take three, four, five, six. Yep. Fun game. All right. No fourth land gets punished. All right. O2 with a deck that looks like a 3 0. So Magic Online is a funny beast sometimes. There is some weird, there is some weird, uh, Weird inclusions. Like, maybe we couldn't have played Fall of Thran. Maybe we could have taken out Karn's Temporal Sundering. Maybe the red with Jaya's Immolating Inferno was stronger. I don't know. Um, there were definitely situations where we just needed to draw a certain thing. I think Sarah's Disciple has consistently underwhelmed me. Uh, even if it's just a 2-2 a flyer. Even if you're able to trigger Historic every single turn and it's a 2-2 flyer. It's not good enough. It just doesn't do anything. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll catch you next time.